today's video is going to cover what electrical work a DIYer is actually allowed to do in their own home in the UK. But firstly, I'm quickly going to go through basics of how your household electrics are actually set up. So this is the electrical cupboard in my house. Um, but before we go into anything else, I just want to note this video is purely for entertainment purposes and any electrical work you need to know what you're doing or get someone in who does and it's all at your own risk. So we're just going to start out on the right hand side here. So down here, this is the incoming main. Now this is a pretty old cable and then we go into this very old looking head here and my research indicates that this is from the 1940s approximately. But if anyone knows better, please do stick it in the comments because I'd be interested to know. So my house was built in 1904 and I suspect this is the original supply that was put in, but I suspect it was put in some years after the house was built. Now this green bit and the cable is owned by the network operator, usually called the distribution network operator or DNO. Now in the UK, this isn't the national grid. The national grid is just all the pylons and uh, all the high voltage equipment, whereas local DNOs own the cables that actually go from the grid to houses. And they're split up into a few different regions in the UK. You can see on this map how it's split and where I am, I'm UK Power Networks because I'm in the southeast. So they own this bit and they're responsible for this bit. In here is a fuse. You can see just on the side here, You've got a seal there, so that stops me opening this because if I want to open this I have to snip that seal so that they know if anyone's been in here or not. Inside there's a fuse, so if I were to overload the house this fuse should blow. In here it's actually just a bit of fuse wire. Now when we got a smart meter they did tell me this was a 60 amp fuse wire in here, but you could get this whole thing changed out to be 100 amps if you needed it to be. So up to here it's owned by the DNO. Then these cables here come down and they go into smart meter here. Now smart meter is owned by the electricity company that you buy your electricity from. So they own these cables, these colored tails, and they own the meter. So this one's a smart meter, it's got gas as well. And you can see what we've used there. So we haven't had this too long. And then these two here, these are owned by me, the cables that come out of the meter, and they come out of the meter, and they go through the wall here and come up into this fuse board, or more accurately called consumer unit. Now consumer units come in all different shapes and sizes. This is actually a plastic one. I think it was up till about 2014, they were fine to be plastic. Now if you've got a more modern one, they'll actually be made of metal. Or if you're in a very old property, you might have fuses and those actually might be in a metal box. But if you have that, they definitely need an upgrade. Inside this, we've got our main switch here, which turns off the supply that comes from the meter. And it's a double pole switch, so it switches both the neutral and the live. And then this is called a split load board, this one. So you've got two RCDs and then a bank of breakers either side of it. So these are called MCBs and they all have different ratings on them. So this one here is actually a 32 amp one, and this is for an oven circuit, whereas this one here is kitchen sockets, and it's rated at 20 amps. There's all of these different ones, and these send cables all around the house to supply the various lights, sockets, and anything else. And so these MCBs, these trip if the current being pulled exceeds their rating. So if this was pulling more than 32 amps for a sustained period of time, this would trip. Whereas these RCDs, although these are also have an amp rating, this one is 80 amps, the way these work is that they trip if they detect a difference in the current in the neutral and the live. So as the saying goes, MCBs, which are these, save the cables, they stop the cables being overrated. Whereas these RCDs save lives because they notice if there's current going somewhere outside of the circuit, so into a person perhaps, and then they trip very quickly. They usually trip in a matter of milliseconds. And this one here, it trips at 30 milliamps. So if you've got more than 30 milliamps in difference between the neutral and the live, then it will trip. And it's the same over here, although this one's rated at 63 amps. I'm not sure why there's a difference. 
but there is. So that is your consumer unit. Now the consumer unit is something that DIYers can't do, so you're better off just leaving this alone. Um, obviously you want to turn your circuits off that you are working on, but it's not worth taking the cover off this because you can't be doing anything that's inside it. The household electrics in the UK are governed by Part P of the building regs and those say that anyone undergoing work in a consumer unit has to be registered and their works that have to be notified with building control with your local building control so keep away from this if you're a DIY. So the bits that you are actually allowed to do as a DIY is modifying existing circuits so if you've got a socket circuit and you want to add another socket in a room that's fine or if you want to add another light anything like that add an outside light that's fine what you can't do is create a new circuit and creating a new circuit would require a new breaker in your consumer unit. The other thing that you can't do is works in special zones. So kitchens and bathrooms are typically your special zones because you've got water there. Any electrical work in a bathroom especially is always notifiable works. So you need to get a qualified electrician in to do that or you can actually do things yourself but you have to have them inspected by the council but I don't know how common that is or how easy that is to do I think generally it's just going to be easier to get a qualified electrician in now I'm talking about the fixed wiring here so I'm talking about sockets light switches lights that are wired into the mains that type of thing I'm not talking about appliances that you plug in appliances that you plug in are governed by different regulations and those you're much more likely to be able to do as a DIY, you know, rewiring a plug on a lamp is unlikely to be any kind of problem. The other things that you're okay to do as a DIY is maintenance, so changing the faceplate of a socket, you know, replacing a socket cover, replacing a light switch, changing a light, anything like that, you're absolutely fine. Although again, that still comes with the caveats of in special zones, so if you're in a bathroom, changing the down lights in the bathroom, that's one that you need to get an electrician in for. You know, changing a bulb is fine, but actually changing the light fitting itself does need a specialist. And the reason is because you've got the presence of water. So down lights in bathrooms actually have to be IP rated. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.